I was really sad to hear about the passing of Miss Diane Thorne, who is the 70s superstar of some of the most explicit, notorious exploitation films of all time, the Ilsa series, starting with Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS, and I consider myself really well-versed and frankly a little jaded by horror movies and exploitation films, but the first Ilsa film really pushes my buttons. Maybe if you want to show someone the most extreme exploitation film of all time, you would put on Ilsa She-Wolf of the SS. It really has not mellowed with age. Now, the ultimate in screen terror. The horror that was the Nazi nightmare explodes on the screen. Because of the shocking nature of many scenes in this film, it is definitely not recommended for the squeamish or easily offended. It does have a lot of unintentional laughs, but it hardly makes up for the tone. It's just so grim and vile, and the special effects are really pretty realistic. Critic Vincent Canby said of the film, this could possibly be the worst softcore sex and violence film of the decade and the funniest. He also noted how the concentration camps looked like Southern California and how you could almost hear the freeway traffic. I think the reason why the sets look so cheap is because they were the old ones from Hogan's Heroes, which at the time had just gotten cancelled. Spoiler alert, at the end of the first Ilsa film, she is killed off, but don't worry, because she comes back for the sequel, which I love a lot more, Ilsa Harem Keeper of the Oil Sheiks, and they never really explain why Ilsa is back, she just is, it's almost like she's Jason Voorhees, or maybe it's another timeline dimension. But the whole tone of this movie is less grim. Everything is played up for more hilarity, even though it's still wall-to-wall -wall perversion. And the other reason I like this film a lot more is that it has lots of uh, Russ Meyers actresses. So there's Uchi Degard, who's from Super Vixens, Haji, who starred in Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, and she's in a really notable cameo in Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. It also has a small role by Su Ling, who is in Russ Meyers Up. In this one, a lot of the laughs come from Satin and Velvet, who are the names of Ilsa's guards. And they just have some of the most intense facial expressions and just overacting. I love the scene where they're girl talking with Ilsa and spilling it. We should kidnap a man. One with blonde hair and blue eyes. And the body of a god. For you. Man that comes to me will not have to be dragged like some slave. Until then. I can wait. I mean this with the utmost respect, but Diane Thorne was a great female, female impersonator from her hair to her makeup and her intense outfits, including this insane lace-up peekaboo outfit that kind of looked like Aunt Ida's in John Waters' Female Trouble. I have been saving it for just such an occasion. I love this one too because it just has a great shoot 'em up ending, which is a real trope of exploitation films. I actually had a very brief phone conversation with Miss Diane Thorne in 2018. I'm based out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and that's where she lived and conducted wedding ceremonies with her husband. And they had been married since she made the very first Ilsa film, and no agent would represent her, so he became her agent and her husband, I think, in the same year. They perform ceremonies anywhere you want to in Las Vegas. And so I called her just to see what her services included, and she was very kind, very gracious, and detailed about how they preside over things. And she, I also remember she told me about her scheduling. She said, I don't do mornings, because I don't know if you know this, I'm an actress. And the whole, up until that point, I was very professional on the call and just kind of business as usual, but... She kind of opened that floodgate and I kind of fanboyed out to her and was like, yes, of course, I love the Ilsa films and I love Point of Terror. And Diane Thorne was super gracious about it. She just kind of laughed and thanked me and no regrets. I did go into a different direction, so I was not eventually married by Ilsa, She-Wolf of the SS, but... It was a very interesting moment just to have her on the phone, and I just kept thinking in my head, like, oh my god, I'm on the phone with the she-wolf, the harem keeper, the wicked warden, the tigress of Siberia called me back. We Magazine says Diane Thorne is a female James Bond. 
dedicated to evil. She's meaner than Dirty Harry. Don't miss cinema's number one female villain, Diane Thorne, that woman you love to hate in her newest, meanest role as the Tigress. Point of Terror is one of her better movies. She plays another, you know, evil villainess, but there's no torture porn in this one. It's just a ludicrous sex melodrama, and I think it's kind of closer to spirit to the sex, drugs, and rock and roll of Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. I also really love Point of Terror because it's it's more of a beefcake movie than a cheesecake movie, and what I mean by that is that it kind of exploits or sexploits its star Peter Carpenter even more than it does Diane Thorne. It really shows off his assets more than hers, which I think is pretty interesting. Her villainous roles sort of put a halt on her career at first, but she took on controversy with a lot of class and style and eventually persevered. Popularity only seemed to grow with her age, and I know there's some people who consider these movies the lowest common denominator and maybe they wish that society would just forget about these movies. But the thing about Diane Thorne, once you see her, she's very unforgettable. Her garish style has a huge camp appeal and it really lingers in your brain. Uh, rest in peace, Miss Diane Thorne, and a special shout out to all your loved ones who are dealing with your loss. You were loved by me and many other cinematic sickies out there. My name is Jacob Lomax, and thank you so much for watching Strangest Films.